Welcome to the World of Warcraft, the Adventure Continues panel. Your panelists are Alex Afraziabi, Tom Chilton, Brian Holinka, Dave Kosak, and Chris Metzen. Hello, 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 BlizzCon! Guys, I am, I am so excited. I'm so excited to be here, just to, to meet the fans uh, and the costumes. Guys, you outdo yourselves every year. I gotta tell you, you guys make this the most fun gaming convention I've ever been at, hands down. Thank you so much. All right, so we are gonna talk about Warlords of Draenor. So if you were, uh, uh, if you were at an earlier panel, uh, we blew through, I think we blew through 200 PowerPoint slides in like 60 minutes or something. It was a little, it was a little much. We kind of ran out of time. For this panel, we wanted to, wanted to slow it down a little bit, take it easy. Uh, we're going to talk about just a few topics. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, the, the heart of this expansion, uh, our values, uh, sort of the soul, and why, you know, most importantly, why Draenor is absolutely the next place to take uh, the Warcraft franchise. All right, so let's, uh, let's get my PowerPoint up here because I'm a big fan of PowerPoint. Uh, uh, okay, so recap. How did we get here? How did, this, how did this all begin? We asked ourselves, what if? What if you take, you take this guy, Garrosh Hellscream? Now, we know, we know about Garrosh. We know about his values. We know what's important to him. We know, yeah, yeah. We know the kind of horde that he wanted. What if someone gave him a golden ticket, maybe a certain bronze dragon that you might have met on the Timeless Isle, to go back and make the horde that he wanted? What if he stops the orcs from drinking the blood of Manroth, stops them from becoming the fell, green-skinned, possessed, barbaric horde that, that, that we know from the past? Makes that one little change. What do we get? Oh, we're still getting a horde, all right. We're getting a little something like this. We call it the Iron Horde. There they are. We're going to talk a little more about these badasses a little bit later, but uh, I, can give you, I can give you a quick nickel tour there. There's Kargath Bladefist there on the left. Uh, Black Hand is looming above him. If you've played the RTS games, these names are familiar. Now, before, maybe, maybe they were an inch-high unit on an RTS screen, but now we're going to get to meet him. We're going to get to smell their breath. We're going to get to really interact with these guys. Now, uh, a couple things, a couple things to note. So, Garrosh, he's not the main villain of this expansion. Just want to make, make that clear. Uh, he's going to set things in motion, and then they're going to spiral, spiral out of control, which is kind of awesome. Uh, the other thing to note is that they are coming for, you know, highest point of equity for us, I think. Um, but the second point is, as it always has been, um, the world. And we went through a whole lot of iteration as to what this world could be. I think we, we really yeah, we kind wanted of, to get those warlords, and we were like, well, what does he do? Does he raise them from the dead? Does right. he bring them back? Where do we put them? Where do we put this expansion? And we actually did that. We initially went, we're going to, Garrosh is going to go to the Outland itself. He's going to be exiled or something like that. He's going to use some kind of ancient horn and resurrect the fallen warlords and then invade Azeroth. And as we started to look at what that would look like from a world design perspective, I think we all were a little over Outland as it exists now. But then we thought about, wow, this, there, there's something here, though. There's, there's a world here with a story to tell. And so how do we get that world, how do we get that version of Outland to our players who have never seen it and get our warlords? And I think this is how we started going down this path of what we have now, which is the warlords of Draenor and Draenor 30 years ago. And Tom, in particular, really wanted us to get into the theme of time travel and use it a lot. Um, because yeah. it's very popular. And, or not. And easy we use do. time cop rules, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's important to note this is an expansion about Draenor. So it's not, really, it's not really the time travel expansion. You don't have to worry about Thrall's parents not meeting and now he's got to play guitar at the school dance. That's, that's not the expansion we're building. We want to get you to Draenor. We want to get you to this really epic, mythic, heroic place uh, to have savage adventures with savage savages savaging the landscape. Is that good? Savage and uh, So, I, I, actually, I, like on that point, like, like just, just to get out ahead of it, like with the time thing, I mean, I mean, you know, we've got a number of stories kind of set in the past, you know, War of the Ancients and things like that. 
and there have been issues over time where there's little potholes or little you know little breaks in the line. Um, you know, as, as that factored into this expansion set and, and really chasing this story, um, we certainly thought a lot about that. The time travel stuffs old means that we can have heroes rise up to the challenge. First of all, that's you guys. You guys got to face this face this kind of threat down. Someone just raised their fist. Yeah, he's talking to me. You guys are going to get to do that. Uh, it also gives us the opportunity to really kind of adventure with some heroic characters. And I'm very pleased to introduce you to Yurul. Uh, Yurul is uh, one of the Draenei. Uh, this kind of uh, situation, this kind of savagery, go ahead, have a drink, is going to force ordinary Draenei uh, to step up and, and become extraordinary. And so we're going to get to follow Yurul's journey. Uh, she's kind of a, a Joan of Arc kind of archetype for the Draenei uh, is one of the kind of characters we get to follow and you get to help on I your, mean, just to jump in on that, Dave, it's, it's like you know, we, we're aware that the past number of expansion sets, you know, we, we set the Draenei up in Burning Crusade. It was potentially a really, you know, really deep, really interesting kit. And by the end of that game, you know, they had, they had got help from, you know, the Alliance and Horde and, and ultimately did whatever we did in Outland. Uh, we, built, they hung we beat Illidan, right? There's, there's, yeah. Um, it was a little aimless uh, in in hindsight. No, nothing, no, nothing personal. Uh, it's all Alex's fault. Yeah. But ultimately, the Draenei kit had a lot of potential, and the past number of expansion sets, we haven't done much with it. So part of this was being really, really excited to kind of, kind of dig in on the Draenei kit and show them. Um, I think David said it earlier, kind of at the height of their civilization. You know, before they were rolled by the Horde, before they were annihilated, we get to see what they were like and what they thought and how they lived and were their factions within their own race. And being able to create a character like Euro has been super cool, right? Just not only to get, uh, you know, butt-kicking female character kind of to the fore of the Draenei, but just to have you know, just a really rocking new you know, mega level alliance champion, you know, that isn't one of the, you know, the, the same old race leaders, like that was something that was really, really fun for us. Again, once we started talking about going back to Draenor, all these sort of ideas and plots started to spring into mind. We got really excited about it, which is a, a, a good sign. While we're talking about the alliance, hey, let's talk about the alliance. Uh, much like Pandaria, alliance and Horde, they're going to come in, this is going to change them. Uh, and so this is something we really get to explore. Uh, we talked about this a little, we talked about this earlier in the other panel. I mean, the Alliance at this point, it's superpower status. And in a lot of ways, this is beyond the dark portal all over again. What I really like about this is the Alliance, the Alliance is going on the offensive. They are taking the battle to them. They're stepping through the portal and kicking somebody. Speak it, Brother Dave. Love it. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, who's going to be one of the first people to step, step through? Well, uh, do you guys remember Marad? Maybe, maybe not. Some of you do. Good. From the Burning Crusade cinematic. Maybe that's all you remember him from, because we really didn't do a lot with Most Marad. Most of the dev team did not remember Marad, by the way. Although we have statues of him all <laughs> that's throughout a fact, the office. by the way. Uh, so, you want to talk about some unresolved issues. Marad saw, uh, saw it all go down. He saw his people just slaughtered. Everybody he knew, practically, from Draenor slaughtered. So he's got to face kind of the, the demons of his own past. He's going back through there. He's going to try and set things right. He's on the front lines of the Alliance going through. And then his own values, once he comes face to face with this, are going to get, are going to get questioned and tested. We're going to really get to, get to explore this character. Anything else about Murad? What do we want to say about Murad? I mean, I think, I think it's a theme, though, for us in terms of the warlords of Draenor as an right. expansion, right? I feel like um, it's not just the orcs that are the warlords. I, I think that there's a lot of history here. There's a lot of people here. There's a lot of characters here. And I think Murad, we're going to find out um, as we go through his story, is, is also categorized as one of the warlords of Draenor. And maybe by the end of this thing, you will be too. We'll see. How about this guy? How about this guy? Who wants to see him put some armor back on? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Is it about time? Yeah. He's uh, talk about some unresolved issues. He's got some. Uh, he's got a hammer to pick with Garrosh, I think. Yeah. Talk about unresolved issues. Yeah, <laughs> Thrall's chomping at the bit. Yeah, we had talked about this before. We had seen it on the internet. Like a lot of people have been speculating that who is the orc racial leader in the Horde now, um, and we haven't totally decided it yet. But uh, if 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 I was to be asked to vote. 
Um, I would say I don't think the orc racial leader is thrall at this point. I think it should be like Sarfang or someone like that. Um, because Brother Popular Thrall vote. here has some serious work to do to ultimately bring Garage to justice. Um, certainly to get a new outfit here. Um, and ultimately just solve a bunch of problems with his hammer. Yeah. Would please me. The best, the best solutions involve, involve the hammer. Yeah. Strong blood, blood but, instruments. But Thrall's story really kind of dovetails into just the whole Horde story. The Horde, as we said earlier, has to come face to face with sort of its own past at a time when it's trying to reinvent itself after the disastrous reign of its last war chief and it's trying to really figure out who it is. To go back to the roots and really figure that out is, uh, is something that excites us about the Horde storyline here. All right, and you know, we, we talked about this earlier, the Draenei, we haven't really had, uh, uh, we haven't been able to do a whole lot with them in the last couple expansions, and people are saying, what about the Draenei? This is really our opportunity to really look at their civilization, look at what made them, what made them cook, what made them tick. Even in Burning Crusade, we only saw them after they had already fled, after uh, everything had already been destroyed, when we were exploring the Draenei civilization, it was pretty much wrecked already. This gives us a chance to see who they really were, what they were about, and... Yep, uh, I'll, I'll, just to cut in on you, the, one, one of the promises we made, a pact that we made for this one, as we first started talking about the Draenei, was that we're not going to allow them to crash any spaceships this time. What about, a, what right. about a little spaceship? A little spaceship? No? Okay, all right. Uh -huh. No crash Draenei no, spaceships. No spaceships. It's very important. We really get to explore the Draenei. And you know what I, what I think is really interesting is we get to see them at that pivotal inflection point. I mean, this is their Pearl Harbor moment. We get to really see them at the key moment in, in, uh, in their recent history. Uh, so that'll be, that'll be pretty exciting. It also lets us build up the culture kit, like what, what their buildings look like, you know, how, how things really were at, at kind of the height of their civilization on, on Draenor. Uh, last, uh, last point. Uh, and this is more of a gameplay value, really, than a, uh, a necessarily a story value. But uh, we, we, uh, we're excited building this world. We're excited building Draenor. And something that we'll talk about tomorrow in the Raids, Quest, and More panel is that we really want you to get out there and explore this world. We've loaded it with all these kind of cool nooks and crannies and these little hidden caves. Uh, and, and we want to load those hidden caves up with uh, treasures and events and spontaneous things happening around you while you're questing. A little more like the Timeless Isle. If you play the Timeless Isle on Pandaria, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of rare bosses. There's a lot of stuff that just happens that's bringing people together all the time. Uh, I can give you, let me give you an example of that. This is kind of not the greatest screenshot, but it illustrates a point. Uh, while you're in Frostfire, which is playable here at the, at the convention, if we would ever stop talking, we'd let you play the game. Um, it's playable here at the convention. Uh, while you're running around the world, you'll see the Iron, the iron Horde here. They got snowed in. Uh, this is their, their caravan. Uh, these dudes with shovels are trying to dig it out while their, their war chief is yelling at them. Uh, you can just sort of stumble on this while you're playing. In the back of that cart, there's a treasure chest. If you can kill these guys, if you can kill the, the cleft hook that's pulling it, uh, then you can loot the treasure chest. There's not a quest to go there and do that. It's just something you find in the world. It's just an example of the kind of things that'll be around the world. So we really want you to just dive into Draenor and, and just explore and, and find things and discover things as you play and just make it a more dynamic living world. Uh, and that's something we'll talk about more tomorrow. Uh, so I'm gonna I'll wrap it up. I'm gonna bring it home. Uh, this screenshot to me says so much about Draenor, and I love it. And, and you might not, you might have seen it at the earlier panel, you might not have gotten the scale of it. Um, you know, sort of near the neck of the giant there, that's a tower. This is huge. This is an entire city. The Thunderlord Orc Clan, uh, uh, the way they work, you know, they all get together and they hunt giants together. And they, they work with teamwork, they to topple these enormous giants. So hundreds and hundreds of years ago in their, in their kind of mythic past, they killed this enormous, enormous giant and then carved out a city in its, in its dead husk. And this kind of became a, a Thunderlord city. So this gives you, this, this really gives you a feel for Draenor and how savage it is. Uh, that, that uh, uh, you know, this is the kind of thing, uh, this is the kind of place it is. It's a mythic place, it's an epic place where you can have these amazing, 
big, epic, huge adventures and really feel like the hero. And that's the value of this expansion that we're really getting across. That's why we're so excited about going to Draenor. Uh, all right, parting, parting thoughts. What am I missing? What do we Parting thoughts. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Kozak. Do you want to go right to the Q&A? Are we, we good? We get it? Did we nail it? We uh, have 35 right. minutes to get our heads kicked in with Woo. brutal questions. Okay. They're passing out red shirts somewhere over there. Oh. I, I saw him the other night. He's ready to go. He's got, he's got one. We're fine. It's fine. This is uh, for Minister Metzen. I've been enamored with this world you have created since listening to my father slay wretched pink skins in the other room. And I would be honored if you would uh, sign my Warcraft 2 manual. Uh, I, I, totally. Um, let's do that after the Q&A, though, dude. Come, come down here, and I'll, I'll take care of that. Awesome. Hey, guys. Uh, my question's for Chris. A couple of BlizzCons ago, someone had asked you to talk a little bit about the internal, uh, the internal conflict Prince Kael'thas was dealing with during the events of the Burning Crusade. And you got really excited and you said someone at Blizzard had written up like a 70 page treatment and, and you were really excited but you couldn't talk about it now. Could we get an update on that? Oh, no, don't look at me. <laughs> yeah, he, he, well the update is he totally wrote it uh, and it exists. I can't give you an exact update and we might have talked about this two weeks ago. Like we're close to publishing it. Woo. I just can't remember in what. Um, because there's so much awesome stuff we're doing. Um, I don't remember. D Dave, you were supposed to be on top of that. I'll get right on that. It's like Rise of the Prince Kale Fist book. I see the bus going by. It's Dave's under it. Yeah, it's, it's, a. Uh, <laughs> me, me. Um, we are, it, it's, uh, imminent. Awesome. Maybe. Thanks. Hey guys, uh, total respect for everything you do and all the attention to detail in the story. It'd be easy to, to gloss over those, I think, and I'm glad you do it. But uh, just with the way this is uh, shaping up, the, the storyline, uh, we've always been moving things forward. Uh, of course, we're going back in time now. So how will, you, you know, how will our future really shape up story-wise? How do you build anything meaningful off of something that didn't really happen? Well, I... I would really want to emphasize that, that I think that it all depends on how you look at it in that we aren't going back in time and doing an adventure that takes place back in time. This is Draenor of 35 years ago, but it's now. It is a present and imminent threat. The Dark Portal will have turned red. Iron Horde will be spilling through the Dark Portal. That's today. That's now. Okay, so this is, that's a very real threat to Azeroth. Um, so even though these are, you know, these are the orc clans as they were, um, it's very important to remember that this is happening now and this matters now. It's, it's a lot like uh, you go to Northrend, you kick the Lich King's butt, you come back home. It's going to feel like that. You're going to go to Draenor, you're going to address this threat, you're going to save the world, you're going to come back heroes. There, there will be repercussions from this expansion too. And I mean, we obviously it's spoilery, we can't go into it, but we'll, as you unfold or uncover what's happening, you will see. All right, thanks, guys. The, the events of this one definitely culminate uh, and ultimately launch the next one, whatever that is. Hi, guys. Um, I have a question for you. If we're going, OK, you're talking about Draenor. We're supposed to be going back in time, but we're not going back in time, right? Correct. So Outland never happened? Still out there. Still out there, OK. What about Alaria and Turalyon? Still out there. Are we gonna see him? Uh, we decided this right. We did decide. Go ahead. We did. Yeah, go. Spill it. We did. <laughs> yes or no? It's a, it's a no, right? Yes, it's a totally it's a, no. It's a, it's a no. It's a no. It's it wasn't a, no. a guess. <laughs> we're, we're not going to see them. Yeah. Listen, You're listen, a bad, listen, bad listen. Man. You ready? You ready, for, <laughs> ready for the magic word? Yet. We have plans for them. But do you know who's coming through with us? Uh, Cadgar is going to come with us. He's going to be working with us. Awesome. Awesome. It's a lot of people uh, that you're going to be working with. Hello. Yeah, yeah baby. Hey. The 
the lighting's like perfect. It's just. Oh, it's like oh. a spotlight. Okay, my question is not so much about Warlords of Draenor, but one thing I've kind of wondered about, especially since Pandaria came out. The southernmost points of the Eastern Kingdoms, Kalimdor and Pandaria, are all either jungle or desert, which almost suggests we're at the equator. So does that mean there's a whole southern hemisphere of Azeroth left to explore in the future? Or maybe the planet is just very steeply angled. Hmm? Uh, a lot of the climate of Pandaria is shaped by Azeroth's unique ocean currents, thanks to the maelstrom. Ah. Trade winds. It creates some different Trade weather. Winds. Ah. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. One, one day. No. Let's just say. What did you say? Yes. Ocean and no. currents. <laughs> we could say yes and no, at the same time. No, it's a very, it's a very astute observation. It's crazy. Actually, we, we actually have argued about this in the studio. And it's, uh, boy, we went back and forth. Because it does look like it's all temperate, you know, kind of down there. Um, so I think it's totally possible that there's more stuff down there. If these guys would quit doing globes with art inside of, uh, was it Old War? Well, you can't put globes with continents. It's going to look like that's all there is. And you go, no, it's going to look cool. <laughs> it's going to look awesome. But don't, don't do it. Don't do it because it, it doesn't look like there could be anything else. Was oh, my argument. It, it did look cool, though. It did look cool. The, oh, on the bright side, the there cool. is a good way to work around that. The globe in Ulduar already isn't accurate, so you could just say it's obscured. See? Exactly. Fair enough. What, what did the Titans know, anyway? What did they know, really? But it's a good observation. Now, there is potentially, yes, more stuff a little, you know, south of the border. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, Redshirt Guy. <laughs> and we're all right. Yeah, we made it. We made it. <laughs> Relatively Dude, ask unscathed. away, baby. What have you got? All right, so Tome of Divinity, found by Uther in the Dead Mines. Oh, he goes to recover it, but it specifically mentions paladins in it before there are paladins in Azeroth. So the question is, were there paladins in Azeroth, Titan-related, whatever, um, and where does the tome come from? Dave? I, I can't really say that one. I'd, I'd investigate the author of the book and see if his facts were correct at the time. <laughs> um, yeah, what was it, I don't what know. Was it from? It, was it from? It was in, in, the, in, the, in the Dead Mines, right? right. The, uh, the tome of... Uh, yeah, somehow the ogres get a handle on it. Uh, Lothar goes to recover it for Northshire Abbey. And was, this, was this in the War One manual? Yes, and it was a mission in the original Warcraft. Oh, that's right. Well, I didn't, I didn't work on the original Warcraft, so... <laughs> We're, we'll look it up, man. We'll, like, none of us have an answer Will we that. see Paladin lore <clears throat> in this expansion, then? That's a good question. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. No, uh, the, the, the yes is not a yes. The yes is a right on. Uh, yeah, no, we have not... We, 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 will. We, we, actually, will. Actually, we will. We will totally do Paladin lore. Why don't you just answer from now yes. on? Because yes. he knows. Actually, we have talked about, yes, there will be Paladin lore um, in this expansion. Yes. Lots of it. But not from Northshire Abbey. I just, want, I just want to preface this by saying that uh, I had the Chris Metzen Twitter account for a long time before Are it was you taken the, away. Uh, what was it called? Cool Chris Metzen now. That was, uh, I originally had access, but I got a terms of service violation and to have that taken away. Um, <laughs> That's right, baby. <laughs> so my, my, actual quest, my actual question is, is uh, Garage in this expansion was kind of a, um, to me personally, it was a little bit of a letdown because some of his characterization as far as like um, the legacy of Grom wasn't really addressed. There were some things where like Grom had made a mistake where he had corrupted the entire race. And then we have a scene where Garage takes the heart of Yersage, corrupts himself, goes down basically the same path and never acknowledges it. I was just wondering if you guys were going to address that in the next expansion. 
Y yeah, yeah, I think, I think, yes, hey, hey. we are going to. Yes, and, times two. And times two, and I feel like we, we may have pushed Garrosh um, a little too far in one direction, um, I, my fault, uh, <laughs> but, but uh, I think we, we are going to, I don't want to say we're going to redeem him, we're not going to redeem him, but I think we will provide for a satisfying ending for you, Thank you. and him. Well, thank you personally to sat for a satisfying ending, I hope. Uh, it was just, there was like two mentions in the entire expansion, neither of which were from Garage about Grom. That's just what my question is about. So, yeah, yeah I mean, it, at the end of the day, what we're talking about is whether his path had a lot of continuity with his daddy's path, for sure. And, and oh, hell, it, it ain't over yet. But what you're, what you're, totally looking at there is that this dude has crazy daddy issues yeah. right no, exactly. this little boy growing well, up exactly. in I, was just, and I was just hoping that that would be like some major I just don't isn't gonna, he's not going to talk You'll about see that. it he's not going to talk to us about it right but like yeah. yeah he's got some serious issues and ultimately I mean when you really look at this idea he's working some stuff out he's literally going back like, like yeah it's, it's, it's foreground you know yeah. I've said We're, too much you, 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 no, you haven't said too much, but yeah. there's a lot of Garrosh explanation that's going to happen in this expansion. I, for, for the better, I think, though. So hopefully it'll shed some light on him. Yeah. Well, thank you for answering my question, and I'm just still a little bit upset about the Twitter incident, but I'll get over it. <laughs> How dare you make me look funny on Twitter? Oh, the new, the new Dwarf the model is here. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a question about the demons in this next expansion. Since you say the timeline is going to take place before the rise of the Horde, how are demons uh, con connected with the expansion with Medan, with uh, still corrupted? Is he still contacting Godan? Yeah, you know, one thing we didn't, I, I forgot to point out on the image, I mean, you'll notice that Godan has green skin on the image. He's, he drank the Kool-Aid, he's bought in, and in this sort of uh, configuration of events, he's kind of the outcast. So that tension between Gul'dan and the orcs is something we, we really get to explore. Right. It's definitely part of the core storyline. I, I, actually, we should have called that out. Gul'dan at this point has already, um, you know, kind of taken the power. Um, and then he offers it ultimately, you know, as it goes to Grom and the rest. And uh, things go a very, very different way. Um, so imagine, you know, up, up, up to the point where they kind of don't drink, um, you know, all of... Gul'dan's plans, the rise of the Shadow Council, you know, the, the, the beginnings of constructing the Dark Portal itself, like, you know, a lot of that has already kind of begun to occur. Um, it's just at the point where the literal corruption came for all of them, they, they stand up and say, no, we're going another way. So Gul'dan definitely plays a major role um, in the storyline. Um, and he's not entirely pleased that his plans um, did not pan out. Okay. Nor is Kill Jaden. Oh, that took. Thank you, gentlemen, for everything you've done. That was a good question. That was a good one. I think we can all agree that this expansion has too much wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. So, a simple question, Chris. Since you're the father of Thrall, are you going to voice the father of Thrall? Uh, I, I, honestly, I would say probably uh, no. I will say no, because I don't know. It has been suggested to me that too many is too many. So I'm I'm happy to do thrall, um, and we'll we'll find a real actor to do Thurita. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, yeah, gentlemen. Uh, sorry. Uh, you showed a lot of really great warlords on the, up there, and while this guy wasn't necessarily a warlord. Where is the best friend of Duratan, Orgrim Doomhammer? You'll, you'll see him. You'll have a... Yeah. In Gorgrom. He's in there. Intimately. Excellent. No, not really. It, it's <laughs> just, you know, Orgrim's... It, 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 he's not one of the chiefs. Um, obviously, in, in... Oh, boy. Yeah, in this continuity, he's, uh, you know, Black Hand second in command. So, um, we're defi he's definitely involved. He's got a bitchin' storyline where you kind of engage with him and... Um, kind of feel him out, but yeah, he's definitely not one of the chiefs. 
Um, so he didn't make the picture. <laughs> That's great. I look forward to seeing him. Yeah, Duratan really feels betrayed by him, and we're going to explore that friendship and see what happens there. That's a big, it's a big plot point. So thank you for asking the question. That was a good one. Take it easy. Uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for making the game. Uh, I want to ask, because we've got the time aspect in the expansion, does that mean we're going to have double ups on certain characters, like to uh, vindicate the uh, Morans? Because... Nope. No. Oh. And it's because we're clever. <laughs> awesome. Again, we really want the emphasis to be on Draenor, and so you know, we, we can decide what kind of story we want to tell, and we're not really telling the time travel story, we're not really telling the, the paradox story, we're telling a story about going to this world and kicking butt. Hi. Um, so, we did a lot of uh, going over all the leaders for the various factions, like Lothamar, why he's still with the Horde, or um, Tyrande, and so on. What did the Pandaren leaders actually add to their factions? Like, why is G still an Ogrima, uh when we're sieging it, and so on? Yeah, it's, it's always a question of space, you know, we only have so much gameplay to explore the different stories of the different faction leaders, and I kind of regret that we didn't get to do more with G and Asa. Um, we sort of hinted that things went, went pretty bad between G and, and the Horde, uh, and, you know, ultimately we, 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 we got him out of there. Uh, sorry, spoiler, if you haven't gotten to that fight yet. Um, but, uh, yeah, we really didn't get a chance to really drill more into their story, their relationship with the Horde. And now that there's a, a kind of a new Horde under Vol'jin, G can sort of step in and be the Pandaren representative for the Horde. Uh, and so, yeah, we didn't really have a lot of space to tell that story, which, which is a shame, but it's a good question. Hi, my question's uh, about Gul'dan's posse, uh, Cho'gal, Terra and Gorfin, are they with the Iron Horde, or are they still with Gul'dan? They, they're with Gul'dan. Oh. Yeah, and it's good of you to bring that up. It's actually going to be a, a pretty big part of the Gul'dan story. As uh, okay. We'll get into uh, Gorfin, we'll get into Cho'gal, we'll is get he, into... Yeah. Is he still alive in the he, old he's, universe? He's actually known as Terra and Gore. Oh, sorry. He's not Gorfin yet, but we'll, we'll potentially see that. All right, thank you. That's a good question. This guy knew his stuff. He's he did, ready. Yeah, He's I like ready that. to go. Hi there. So my question was about how you said there are two timelines. Like he, like uh, Garrosh brings the Draenor from the past to the present. So the characters that like Garrosh and Thrall are related to Grom and Thrall, are they going to learn something about their history or their past? Because it is a separate, you know, now that they brought it and you said it's got nothing to do with our world's history, you know, uh, Garrosh didn't know his father, Thrall didn't really know his father that much and that, were, you know, that way. So how are they going to be impacted by seeing their family members that they never knew? So that's, that's a really good question. Um, and that is one of my favorite things about choosing to go in this direction is, yeah, Thrall didn't know his parents at all. He was an infant when he was kind of left, you know, um, or found more of the point by, was it Blackmore? Um, Garrosh the same way, didn't really know his dad or whatever. And look at that, you know, look at that continuity. Like this is just core throughout this whole thing. And even though the instances may be different, obviously both of these orcs are going back as grown men um, and engaging, um, you know, their their parents really almost like at this as when they were young, you know, or in their prime. What a fascinating experiment, right? And it's all about that. Like obviously these situations would never have naturally occurred, but there's so much for these guys to learn about their folks and about where they come from. Right? Even 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 in those situations are totally different than anything that might have happened the core of those people is still the same. You know, Duratan, Draka, you know, even, even, even Gromash, right? Like they're gonna react um, true to character, you know? And I think these two orcs, you know, Garrosh and Thrall are gonna come away hugely affected by what they find. Maybe it may not match what they always thought. Um, if, if I'm Thrall and I'm going back in time, is Duratan a really noble dude? Or was he noble because the situation demanded that he be noble? Because he didn't want his clan to get, you know, fell corrupted. 
So these are all the really interesting questions we ask as we, as we dig into this lore, as we dig into the, the possible storylines. Um, and I think it, for me, it's, that's the root of it, right, is the opportunity to, to really dig in there and change these guys and how they, how they look at things. I'll be honest with, with you, from the Thrall storyline, you know, we attempted to do something during Cataclysm, which was, um, my friends will tell me it was a little touchy-feely and maybe it didn't work very well from MMORPG, right? Maybe the game doesn't have enough subtlety for where we tried to go with Thrall, you know, like an internal Cataclysm. He's really losing his identity. He's really got a grip to figure out what he's about and look at all the calamity that ensued. But I'll tell you what, Thrall going back to Frostfire and meeting his dad and meeting his family and spoilers, his uncles, right? And a much larger tapestry of frost wolves and just seeing how bad ass they were, this is what he needs. This is the vacation Brother Thrall needed right, to pull pretty, it together and, and remember who he is. People, right? Thrall's what? Like, Duraton and Grom, they're pretty much the same people. Yeah, their character's pretty much the same. You know what I mean? They, everyone's going to be challenged. Everyone will be changed a little bit by these events, but yeah, we're going off the presumption that it's, it's really the core of the character, even though the situations may be a little different. Thank you. Thanks. Hi guys, um, my question has to do with the wibbly wobbly timey wimey as someone mentioned earlier. You said that this isn't going to affect our current timeline, but is there a chance of exploring alternate realities based on what we change in this expansion? Yes. All right. We, we probably great. will do something like that. Um, and, and it does, it, it affects our current timeline, but in, as Tom was saying, in the present, right? So right. these Iron Horde guys, there's they're going to come through, they're going to stomp on people in our Azeroth, we need to stop that from happening. Um, but it definitely does give us that opportunity. Yeah, I think the clarification there is that it, this does affect our current timeline. What it does not affect is past history, right? History is not undone for our timeline. But certainly, there are Iron Horde orcs coming through this portal. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, hello, uh, my question is regarding Zayla and the Dragonmaw. Uh, will we see the Dragonmaw clan and Zulahed the Wack in this expansion? Does Zayla live from the Siege of Orgrimmar? Is she pregnant with Garrosh's kid? What's up with the Dragonmaw? Uh, so Zayla definitely survived the siege, and obviously she's cast her lot in uh, with Garrosh. Uh, and there's a question, does, does she go through with him? And I don't remember if we've uh, decided that yet. She does. Yeah. She does. I think, yeah. I think we said at yeah. some point she does go back. Yeah, she's uh, she's there with uh, with Garrosh back in Draenor. So we're gonna we're gonna find Zayla again. All right, and we'll see the past Dragonmaw clan with Zula had the whack. Uh, honestly, we haven't talked all that much about the Dragonmaw uh, so far, but I would say that that is a possibility. There's a lot of like kind of second tier orc clans. Um, that all have pretty cool kits, but uh, we well, haven't, more, we haven't more been exhaustive yet. Yeah, more importantly, there's no, there's no native dragons on Draenor, so that whole clan identity wouldn't have, wouldn't have existed until later on. In, in effect, what Dave's saying is that he, he, wish, he wishes I hadn't made him up anyway back in Warcraft 2, and sometimes I wish I hadn't either. So we don't know exactly what we're going to do with them. Okay. Hi, guys. Um, to Dovetail on the question about Zayla going through. I want to get into the feminine side of the orcs. Obviously, you've mentioned we're probably going to see Draca, Thrall's mom. Absolutely. Are we going to see Gaia, Thrall's grandma? Is she going to be around still? Uh, she's alive. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And totally. I think she's mother instead of great mother at this point. Yeah, at that right? point. <laughs> she's not so great. Yeah. And <laughs> is since Zayla's possibly going to be going through with Garrosh, is Agra going to be going through with Thrall and Thrall's little one? No. Agra no yeah, that, that honeymoon is over. Yeah, we, um, it's, a, it's more of a, a boy's trip uh, gotcha. for Thrall. There you go. And then the last question I've got about that is, what about um, Garona? Are we going to see her? Yes. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, my question is basically around the age of Grom Hellscream, how he seems to stop aging at some point. Uh, the book Rise of the Horde, he seems to be sold to the shoulder 
with Durotan, like in that Rogue's Gallery pick, which is awesome, by the way. Um, but in Warcraft 3, he's shoulder to shoulder with Thrall, not looking any older. So he looks kind of spry he was, for an he's older guy. Definitely older. Uh, 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 at least 20 years older than Thrall on Warcraft 3. Okay. He's just got good genes, right? So there's not a lot of gray in the hair, like some people. Uh, but yeah, no, he was clearly twice as old. All right, maybe clearly isn't all that clear, but in my opinion, and I wrote it, uh, <laughs> he's, he's definitely, he could be Thrall's dad. Okay. And that was the nature of... Do you, do you want to talk about... Stop there. Do you want to talk about Gromash? Back, I mean, he's definitely a young guy back on Draenor. Do you want to talk about his history, like his whole, his whole thing? Dude, dude's, like, dude's like a rock star back on Draenor. I mean, he's, he's, he's in charge of the wolf riders. He's kind of the, the head of this Mongol cavalry that can just strike viciously at the ogres and then run away. I mean, he's, he's living large. He's partying. He, he's, he's a serious, a serious guy. Uh, it's, it's kind of Gromash's background. And then things go terribly wrong. Yep. Thanks. As oh, and uh, Rex, our origin story, please. All right, guys, my, uh, my first question is, uh, you said that the timeline is before Rises of the Horde, but Duratan's dad dies during the book, so... Well, R Rises of the Horde encompasses a, a, big, a big chunk it of the does. timeline. So, the, uh, so let's, let's be yeah, clear. Yeah. Um, what, what we mean by that is before... Before these guys march through the dark portal and invade Azeroth, that's that's what that means. Before the, the critical events of Rise of the Lord yeah, really begin to move. Yeah, Garrosh goes back uh, two years or so, maybe two or three years before they drink the blood of Manroth. So okay. he goes back, starts manipulating things, and then things will change from there. Okay, and uh, my other thing is, is the Burning Legion going to show up? Yeah, well, Gul'dan's still on the telephone with him, so... <laughs> We'll Don't worry, I'm, I'm going to take care of it. Don't worry. Okay. Kill the hell screams. <laughs> I, I got it. Call in the wolf. The wolf? Thank you, good question. Uh, yeah, I had a question about Sylvanas. Uh, she's clearly still resurrecting dead bodies, taking more land. Uh, Varian at the end of 5.4 says we have to get Gilneas back, but he, no one else seems to notice. And if we're going to be going to Drain, or are we going to be taking care of her? Is she going to become more of a spotlighted character? What's going on with her? Yes. <laughs> No, I mean, we, we love Sylvanas, and I think we like to leave her kind of crafting and doing wicked, terrible things in the background. So one day, she may, you know, do something terrible, and we'll have to deal with it. But for now, she's, she's okay. She's there will be her. a day when she's featured huge. She, that, that's yeah. an awesome character that we all really like, um, and, and there's going to be a time where she'll be in the spotlight. There'll, there'll be some be sort right of reckoning. Time. Yeah. Okay. The last thing she wants to do is go to a planet full of a bunch of orcs. She yeah. does not care. Not interested. Okay. Thank you. Um, hi. So it's I, Rathion. It is. What's up? Hi. <laughs> Will you be distributing loot after the panel? No. I can send you on quests if you want, but no loot. <laughs> Um, so my question was actually about the Blood Elves and if they're going to play a role at all in this expansion. Um, it might be kind of interesting to see like them going back to a planet that they kind of killed before they killed it. Um, and there's be a lot of feelings there for like the Magisters and Kael'thas sympathizers. Um, I, I, I would say to answer that question or to address that question, um, it came up a little earlier. Should we drop it like it's hot or, yeah, yeah. or tease? Um, when the, the paladin question got asked earlier, uh, there may be a correlation with, you know, blood elf paladins, a deeper understanding of where paladins come from, how the light works, what Auchindun is, and what the Draenei have really been up to on Draenor. Uh, how interesting that it's blood elves coming back around to kind of learn pretty big lessons about what it means to be a paladin. After all the events of the Sunwell and the, you know, the kind of redemption of Moru, I, th I think that was the name of the, the, Muru. the, oh, Lord. Muru. Naru. Naru. Oh, Naru. I knew yeah, it. I knew that. Um, but yeah, that whole, yes, that's a theme that we're, we're very interested in looking at. 
Um, on that note, are you going to pull Silver Moon out of 2007 anytime soon? No. <laughs> Rocking 2007 like it's 1996 or something. <laughs> Judge Metal. Okay, thank you. Thank you. As an orc shaman will go into Draenor with the shamanism that was developed on Azeroth, since we're dealing with the race of shamans who were not locked up into Azeroth, what kind of mega powerful shamanism that developed over 35 years on Draenor are we going to be seeing and will it change our method of shamanism as well? You're going to see awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, you're going <laughs> to see Drek'thar. You're going to see that actually embodying a Drek'thar. You're going to see him go blind um, from, from just messing with the elements, so to speak. But they're, they're actually huge uh, sh shamanistic elemental lines that we're going to play with in this expansion. Um, there's going to be a lot that we tell, I think. Yeah. Uh, one thing we get to play with is the different orc clans kind of have some different ideas of, of shamanism. So there's some different flavors out there. And so you can kind of see how they're all sort of treating it a little differently uh, than, than what we would think of as a modern shaman. So that'll yeah. be fun. It's like we're trying to deal with shamanism um, kind of in a, in a different way. Obviously, the class is the class and your, your abilities are your abilities. But we're trying to paint these cultures in a way that's kind of maximum different from Azeroth. Um, but not broken, you know? So like the guy said, we're trying to paint sh shamanism in a, in a kind of a, a different way. It's still innately elemental, um, but we want to kind of mythologize it too, you know? Like Drek'thar going off and speaking to the, the west wind, you know? Right. As opposed to some, it's always like these elemental creatures. We want to kind of mythologize it a bit more and kind of have a little more reverence for it, for shamanism as, as the core, you know, system of this world, you know? Well, Try to play it a little bit if we'd alter how we uh, cast our spells and how they look like it. Well, Warlock's got the green fire quest line. Uh, we have about four minutes left, so maybe one or two questions more. Uh, first off, thank you for the nine years of awesomeness. So is thank that the you craziest very much. thing? Uh, my question is this. In light of the Alliance um, high point, if you will, what can the... Can you expound upon the Horde addressing their issues and, and difficulties of rebuilding a little bit? I think that's a really good question. It's, it's a little hard to answer. There are no direct anything. It's just it, like the adventure's coming and we're planning to do a lot with the Horde. I don't know how to answer it overarchingly, but I think what we've seen recently is a battle between ideologies. The Iron Horde, even though it's not felled out in green, um, is every bit as ruthless and dangerous and hateful as the original Horde from you know, the first few games. Towards the modern times, Thrall built a very different kind of Horde, right? Where there is equality, where there is no, you know, there's no, you know, evident kind of racism. Everybody gets to come in. It's almost this you know, coalition for mutual survival, all these cast out races, right? They didn't have any fast friends, you know, they didn't have anywhere to go. So the Horde just kind of took them all in and Thrall kind of held it all together because that's just the way he sees the world. And so I think the ideological conflict was with Garrosh. To Garrosh, who grew up in Garadar, right, with stories of his dad and Kargath and Kilrog and all these, all these rock stars, it's like the Horde is not about Trolls and el el are you kidding me with these elves? It's about orcs. It's about the orcish ideal. And Garrosh could never resolve that. I think when he met Thrall in, in Nagron all, you know, all those years ago, and that, oh, I love that quest line. I think he was like, yeah, take me with you. Totally. You're such an epic orc. But the more he saw when he got to Azeroth, you know, the, the campaign in the far north, like everything he had been through, I think it just deepened this confusion in him. They're like, this can't possibly be right. Democracy? Really? So I think at this time, under Vol'jin, and especially throughout the events of this next expansion set, I think the Horde's thinking a lot about what are we about? Who are we? Is, there's a troll, is a war chief for the first time. I love that. Almost love the idea. It'd be very difficult 
in gameplay or whatever, just, it'd just be too gnarly to do. But I love the idea. Like, every couple years, like, someone else gets a shot. Imagine a Blood Elf is Warchief. I, I love that. It's just so weird, right? Um, but I think the Horde is in that transition state where, you know, they're trying to figure it out again. Was Thrall's way right? Do we need to adjust it? Should we triple down on it? Um, and we're kind of in the space of exploring every part of that. And I think it's, I think it's a good turn for the Horde. I think, I think there's, like we said in the intro today, I think it's this total opportunity to kind of rebirth what it's always about. It's always going to be a little Wolverine, right? It's all, you know, Horde's always going to be tough and badass and, you know, just kind of that chaotic, neutral, you know, scrapper kind of thing. But I think it's in this place of kind of spiritual transformation. And I think that could be very powerful in the lore uh, in years to come. Thank you very much. Uh, I've seen my little timer here starting to blink, so I think we're, uh, we're out of time for questions. But everybody, thank you so much for coming to the panel. Sorry. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Guys. We'll be Thanks, around. guys. Ask us thank questions. You. We'll be around. Thank you very much. Thank you, BlizzCon. The World of Warcraft, the Adventure Continues panel. Up next, 